Kyle here from allmeterreviews.blogspot.com. Uh, gonna go over a couple things today, but I, I did consolidate like 90% of all my Kevin Gilbert compact discs and some cassette tapes. Um, one specific one I'm still trying to find, can't find. And then the vinyl stuff I didn't take the time to grab just because it's too much work. And I'm thinking I have a week off in a couple weeks, I might be able to go more in depth. I also was going to show some other stuff, but more, this is more like a video for more vid for future videos potentially. So <laughs> it's almost like rapid fire because if I went through all these, it would be like an hour and a half or who knows how long it would take me. So this is just my consolidated Kevin Gilbert collection of CDs and cassettes. So NRG, which this is the reissue from I think it was like 2000, 2011 or 2012. The Giraffe reissue from 2012 of um, Power of Suggestion. The Giraffe reissue from The View From Here from 2012. Lamb Lies Down Broadway, uh, abridged from Progfest 94 as Giraffe. A lot of this stuff is available. A lot of it's not, but a lot of it is available on KevinGilbert.com. Uh, Toy Matinee, Kevin Gilbert presents Toy Matinee, is it Kevin Gilbert presents? Yeah, performs Toy Matinee live, which includes, among others, Sheryl Crow, of course. This came out, I want to say, about 10 or 11 years ago. I can't remember. I should memorize when all these things came out, but, you know, they were just products coming from the estate. This one, I think, available, Toy Matinee Acoustic. I think it's still available. I think they do some covers, and... Cheryl's on this, too, I forgot. But, yeah, they do Rocket Man and um, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, of course, that one. You can find it with Jonathan Brooke, I think it is. It's either Jonathan Brooke or what's her name from um, The Bangles, who he toured with. He toured with jo Jonathan Brooke, but he produced um, one of the members of The Bangles. And I'm, the, the lead singer, I'm spacing on. Um... Now this is the Rubenu CD, which I think I alluded to buying many a few years back, which Kevin produced. John Rubin of the Rubenus is now basically the the primary keeper, whatever manager of his estate, or you know. But I don't know how much I want to talk about this because I honestly have listened to it like twice, and my wife and I were not we weren't really feeling a lot of it, but it's. As he just Kevin described in one of his interviews, bubblegum power pop. The Rubenus have some other albums going back to the seventies, which it's power pop. I don't know. I might it might be more my thing, but this I don't know. I need to revisit it. It was three or four years ago that I bought it, so it came out right before he passed away. I think ninety. I think this was ninety six because he he was working on it. He says produced by Kevin Gilbert. So, all right. So I'm gonna be giving up one of these, but I think this is one of the first two I bought of Toy Matinee. Because um, it was at a place called Echo. I thought it was at, in my, my previous video, I thought it was at an FYE, but it was actually maybe a place called Echo. But it was in Apple Valley. And um, this, you know, one of the standards. So all the other Toy Matinee stuff, I suppose I could just pull out separately here. So I'm not completely going all over the place with with all this stuff. I don't know, chances are I probably won't even do videos about every one of these individuals, but... So... I have one... Oh, I have one other toy matinee. This is the other one I think I got that same day. If you look at the date, it was originally sold to that place back in 2003 and then 2004. The receipt sticker, so that tells you the years. Um, this is the last playing out single. You know, I talked about this on my rarities video many years ago. So, Ballad of Jenny Ledge single, and um, there was a little boy single from Toy Matinee, the CD singles. I got these on Discogs, I remember it wasn't a lot of money. The last point out, I didn't show that. I don't know if these have like, yeah, these have album and edit versions. So some of these were probably sent to radio stations around 1990. But So then these are the two special editions of Toy Matinee that I got. Um, they have as it, the book shows there, and it's got a write up from um, from Patrick Leonard and some other people, and it it also includes it includes um, my fingers fig covering it up. Um, 
some extra track, tracks, including Blank Page, and then some, if you look at the track list, some alternate takes and stuff like that, and remi not remixes, I don't know, I, a lot of like, you know, loops and stuff they were doing that, I don't know, it was Kevin or it would have been other people, it could have been Patrick Leonard who was playing around with it, so, and so yeah, I got the same, another copy of that. I'm on the fence, I'm a, fr a good friend of mine, I've known online, I've met once a couple years ago, he came in town, he's from Mexico, just discovered Kevin Gilbert and Toy Matinee, and he can't find copies of this or just the standard versions. I think I have another copy somewhere of this, but of the standard version. Because I got to the point where I just stopped buying them because I would see them sometimes, but um, I'm going to give him a copy of one of these. I think I'm probably going to give him a copy of one of the special editions just because he's a friend of mine. We have a lot of... He also recently discovered the band Hours, and, you know, if he really loves Kevin, then, you know, it's worthy to give someone one of these special editions. I still have one left, so... So, and then I also have... I'm going to talk about a little more giraffe in a few seconds, but two cassette copies, although this one's still shrink-wrapped, of Toy Matinee. This is the one that's open. It's, I don't know, $3 when I paid for these, but I maybe listened to them once. But there's not really a lot of difference in the artwork. It's just, you know, it's a cassette. You know, um, it's got the same kind of booklet and Kevin and Patrick right there, and, you know. But, you know, cassettes are, especially these that came out when they came out, are rare, so, you know, it's a no-brainer. I saw it there, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I think I'll pick this up since I've never seen it. It was more for collector's sake, being the Kevin Gilbert completist addict. You know, the truth is, I don't have, I don't have a goddamn thing compared to some of these people that, you know... They buy any and everything they can and buy the auctions and the, you know, test presents if they can. But So anyway, I do have also a cassette copy, I think I have a CD copy, of Third Matinee. Kevin has absolutely nothing to do with this record. It had Richard Page on vocals. It does have Patrick Leonard. I should know the exact lineup. Um, I haven't listened to it in a long time, but I remember when I listened to it a few times, I was sort of like, and it's okay. Richard Page, the singer from Mr. Mister, and he did some other stuff. But I like Mr. Mister. Um, but I should maybe give it another go. I, I've heard people that say that <laughs> they like this a lot more than this. Whatever, sacrilege to some of us. But um, maybe, maybe this could find. I find new interest in this. It is it is Patrick Lemmer. And I can't remember if some of the other members, like of the touring band, if Bill Bottrell was involved, or Tim Pierce, or some other people that... But, um, yeah, it's to me it was sort of subpar, but, you know, even thinking outside of what Kevin did, or just the, the songs themselves, but it's not the worst thing I've ever heard. I would probably rate this higher than the Ruben News record, actually, but I should check it out again. <laughs> but I'm not going to be listening. I'll just listen to it online if it is online, so... All right, so then... Speaking of around that same time, of course, Patrick Leonard, Madonna's producer, of course. I don't have, I do actually, I forgot about that. I have a copy of Black or Black and White, Black or White by Michael Jackson, which Kevin worked on, I think, as well, on vinyl. If I ever do my vinyl, Kevin, I'll, I'll see if I can find that. But I have this on vinyl, actually, as well. This is the Dick Tracy soundtrack, you know, Madonna, of course. Kevin did just a lot of the production. Bill Bottrell's on this, but yeah, his name's right there. Patrick Leonard and Bill and, and Kevin Gilbert. I honestly don't think I've ever listened to it. <laughs> I've seen the movie. I saw the movie when I was when it came out and whenever that was, 1990 or 89, 1991. I don't know what if I the print is so small in this I can't even read it. But um it was nineteen ninety, so same year as Toy Matinee. Anyway, not a bad movie. Uh, there's better movies, but uh, you know, War probably the first thing I ever saw was Warren Beatty, so Anyway, that was Kevin. I have it on vinyl. Maybe I'll show it at some point. I showed this in the last video. The giraffe stuff. Giraffe sticker, giraffe wallet, giraffe box here. That's I already did a video about that. About two videos about that, actually. And I showed the other giraffes earlier. So, these are the caviar sessions. So I'm not going... Well, let me just go through these. So, I, along with the, the toy matinee and third matinee cassettes I have, I have a couple copies of Thud. Again... Barely listened to them. I did have a cassette player in my car at the time I bought them, my previous vehicle that I drove. 
Um, but as you can see, I did. This one's open. Even the case is a little cracked. This one's sealed. This was 2008, a buck ninety-five at cheapo. <laughs> I think it was cheapo. So yeah, I was just like, I want this. You know, no question about that. Um, the standard track listing doesn't have cashmere and some others, but in fact, I don't. And this thing, it's like, hey, if you like what you heard on this CD and want to hear more, we offer a sampler of 10 tracks from all our bands. This is from PRA. Just fill in this side of the form and send $7 by check or money order, no cash or CODs to PR Records in Santa Monica, California. And then this is the little write-up. Thanks for buying, Kevin Bullet Thud. But I don't know if the CDs ever included that, but... But yeah, you know, the, the artwork on the cassette doesn't really differ much, but... Um, but you know, you're. I was looking for cassettes because I had that cassette player in my car, and you know, cassettes were sort of starting to make a comeback. I guess they are to an extent still, because um, there is a cassette sore day. There has been one the last five or six years. I know this is gonna be fun to try to wrap up. I don't want to ruin it. Oop. Um. So I just, you know, I decided to pick to pick up a bunch of cassettes. I probably bought, I don't know, thirty, forty. They were cheap. You're spending two, three, four bucks for these cassettes. Um, and I bought like for everything from Faith No More to Extreme to Yes and to like the Moody Blues stuff that was I was not maybe I wanted to hear in my car or I never heard before that was cheap rather than downloading it so so here are a few copies of Thud this one right here is a scuffed I don't know what year 90, 2005 I found this maybe or the first one but I don't know if the condition is terrible it's really the really the, if the CD plays but, um, so that one, I don't know if this was the, it might have been the first one, because I remember one of the ones I bought early on was scuffed, but I, it didn't really skip much. Then I got this one, I think I found this online, I know people were looking for it, and I, I felt bad for buying it, but, you know, I love him so much, you know, the CD book is just like the cassette, pretty much, it's bigger, of course. I needed to have, you know, and at that point, you know, it obviously hadn't been reissued, and there was no vinyl or anything. If you look at the look at the picture of his face. Even that picture is like a rare kind of picture of Kevin. But um So then at some point yeah, see this is in perfectly fine shape, I think. At some point I did acquire see I got a couple more here. <laughs> this one right here, compliments of image. Another image yet. Again, I don't know when I bought which one of these if they don't have the sticker on them. It wasn't like my initial... I don't remember when I finally got Thud. It was probably at least a couple years into the time I became a fan in 2004. But then there was this one, which... You know, for some reason... Oh, wait. Yes, I do. I remember thinking I didn't get this. I did. That's bizarre. I must have shown this. It must have been really... This is the actual cashmere EP. I knew I got the one with the case, but I couldn't remember if I actually was lucky enough to get the CD with it, kind of like the book. Um, but yeah, this came out later, and actually, the other unique thing about this, I don't know what the day, is that this is also shrink wrap, although it has a little crack on it, but this is shrink wrapped as well. <laughs> so. So you got four copies of the standard, th three copies of Standard Thug, one copy, you know, that's uh, with the Cashmere EP that came out later. As the story goes, Cashmere was played on the radio. It was supposed to be on the Led Zeppelin tribute in, in Comium, Comium or whatever it was called. It wasn't on there, but then the, Kevin wanted to hear on the radio, and then he, they played on the radio, and all these people calling in, lining up, requesting it for like a month in Southern California on KLOS, I think. And... Then the, the label just is like, what the hell, you know, <laughs> we're not putting on the, the, the tribute album, but what, you know, you know, so they decided to read, to, to issue it with the EP, uh, the a separate EP. So that actually would be one of this, this, this thing actually come to think about it, in terms of rarity is in a top five items for Kevin, for me, probably. So then of course there's these, which I did a video on these. I don't have time to go through this. These are, this is the, the thud book that came out and like. It's like 2016, 2000, something like that. And there's a lot. I mean, it's a novel in a sense. And the truth be, I probably haven't read through it thoroughly. It Inclu includes Miss Broadway. includes, like, the, the books and stuff like that. And, of course, it goes flying. 
Um, and this I bought with the vinyl, which again, I'm not showing the vinyl today, but um, I have two copies of that vinyl. It even says stuff like this, and you know, I mean, this is, this would be, you could spend an hour just looking through this, you know, and I, yeah, I hear my original notes when I was doing that video, because I was just listening through, writing stuff down about each track, because it's just, it's three CDs worth, and it's like every song is reinvented in some other way, because he never was satisfied, so he, he could have written three versions of Thud, he could have called it Thud 1, 2, and 3, actually, so... So yeah, and this one, and I, I was just like, you know what, these aren't going to be available again, I'll buy another one, so I got it, you know. I thought it's a great record. So now we go on to Shaming of the True, and I have four copies here, and again, I'm not 100% certain these are, this is everyone, like the first one I got, because some of these are different ones. I know at one point I had a copy, the first copy I bought, and I don't know what happened to it, like I, I had the booklet, but I didn't have the CD or something. I don't know how that sort of thing happens, but this is the clear center version, I think, which came out maybe the most last, most recent one, or one of the most, it come, came out within the last 10 years. It has the book, again, this will take me too long to flip through. And then this one I found actually at a record store in Arizona called Zia, you can see. I don't know who in the right mind had this and sold it, but maybe something happened between who they were living with, whom the mother decided that they didn't want, they, they were upset at this person and said, I'm going to sell all your music. I don't know. So, so this one, the, the, the CD is a little different. This is black. I don't know if that's, but this was, yeah, this might be one of the earlier ones. And then these, I think the most recent ones, which are like more of a digi pack. This is the, the foil or whatever, I think. And you know what? I, if I even open these, well, yes, I did. Yeah, because this is like more of a digipack book. It's kind of a cool, um, you know, when we get the box set, I'll, I'll have to compare a little bit, but the book looks more or less the same, but, and I don't even know, I think I bought an extra one or something. <laughs> you, sometimes you can't keep track of everything that you own. I mean, I could go on to Discogs and write it and date it, timestamp it and everything, and then I come around to like finding one to buy another copy or something, and see if this is basically. So I don't know. I, I think I these. I think this is the most recent one. I bought them a couple of years ago. The shaming book I'm not showing. I showed that in a separate video. And a nice gentleman who just subscribed to my channel made a comment was asking me about it. So, um, so all right, I'll go on. This is Caviar, which came out in the early 2000s. So, I mean, I haven't seen dates. Shaming of the True came out in 2000, and then they've reissued it four or five times since then. The new one's going to come out, but fortunately my original copy that I bought has not been perfect and not, not, has not done too well. And you know, this is my probably least enjoyed Kevin Gilbert release, although a lot of people rave about it and they consider it one of them, their favorite things he did. And I haven't listened to it in a, in a number of years. It's very dark and sinister at times, but the music itself, some of it is really good though. Um, but so I bought that, I, I, I came out in 2000, I probably bought this in 2004, 2005, 2000, somewhere in that range. So then they reissued it, and it's going to be limited, so I just bought another copy like a, three or four months ago. Leave it in the case at this point. And in 2009, they released Nuts and Bolts, and this was the, probably the biggest deal to me because it was like all this unreleased stuff from his estate. And this, I consider this album of the, albums of the year, the album of the year from 2009. So um, Nuts and Bolts... It's got a write-up from Sintra Wilson, um, which is a really nice write-up. I transcribed actually on a YouTube message board and some other places, probably in the blog as well. White Hot Genius, as they called him, and he was fighting for everyone, every the little guy, which is the biggest reason why, one of the biggest reasons why I've always gravitated toward his music, beyond what it is for its music, his sort of, his motivation, his what he represents, what Kevin represented. So, yeah... God's been tapping my phone. It has blank page, which was on Toy Man A, of course. Something for my dog, Jenny Ledge, w Waking the Sun. Some of these songs, the versions that are on, like, what I'm about to show again, are different. So, if I choose between the two, I would go with Nuts. Nuts has Terrible Man, and it has Shannon Elizabeth's Childhood's End. 
the world gets just gets smaller until I get her back, which is my favorite the one song my wife really likes from Kevin Gilbert. Unfortunately, it's not online anywhere right now. <laughs> she can't stream it on Spotify or YouTube or, or really anywhere. So, of course, I just showed these and I bought a second copy. The Call Me Kai just came out. And I think that's about it. <laughs> so, at the point that I find that I'll tell you the one I'm, I'm, I've misplaced, that, you know, I misplaced all this stuff is the Giraffe compilation CD, which has one or two track, including This Warm Night Live, which came out in the late 90s, and I bought one after I became a fan. It was still available. But that, maybe I'll try to show that if I find it, and the vinyl, which is only like four or five vinyl records. And then, of course, when the Shaman of the True vinyl box set comes out. <laughs> so the other thing I was just going to show, which is part of like what I was thinking about since I have some time off coming up soon, is... I have, like, let's see if I can look here. Of course, I've been to, like, you know, something like 700, 500 concerts or 500 events and, like, you know, over a thousand artists I've seen. So I've got a lot of um, ticket stubs and what have you. That looks like Glenn Hansard from The Swole Season. So I could, I don't know how to do this. I could just go through them. Like, I know Pete Pardo did that on one of his videos. Or I could literally just go randomly, and I've got stickers and stuff in, in this one, and I've got another one over here. And you can see there's just, there's just, when you go to that many shows, if you save them, and then I've got, I've got other stuff in here too, which is interesting. A System of a Down sticker. Um, stickers, you know, Caddisfly sticker, you know. Promos, promos, I've done promotion. Hours, you know. There's just, there's just a bevy of stuff that might be health partners. I'm not going to be showing that, but <laughs> would be worth showing at some point. Buttons and stuff like that. Remember in the 80s when you had a jean jacket and you have buttons? You go to Great American Music, that was the whole thing, and you get, a, you get buttons. Um, but I'm going to do another video, if I have the time here, about something not related to music, but I'll sort of tell the backstory. But thank you for watching. I'd love you to subscribe. If you subscribe, that'd be great. Um, you know, what, what's your most desired item or what art for them or give me the artist that you have the most and you always seek out who's that one band or artist could be kevin or what's your thoughts on kevin gilbert and collecting this kind of stuff is it unhealthy it probably is unhealthy it's an unhealthy obsession of some of us but what can you do you know i need to seek therapy i suppose <laughs> see you next time thanks bye